Hello. Silencio. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Buenos dias. It's a, it's a great pleasure for me to be with you at the Congress, even if I am in Stockholm. Um, I was actually in uh, Colombia um, this year in February and have been once more in Colombia and I'm very impressed by your country. It's really nice country and you are doing so well in many areas. I'm calling from Stockholm, from the Karolinska Institute and the Karolinska University Hospital in Sweden. We have nice weather also, even if I presume that you have a much nicer than we have. Um, I, will, I have been asked to, to say a few words, uh, a short introduction to the Swedish healthcare system, um, which we have been developing for a long time. And my background is uh, I'm a surgeon. I've been serving as a chairman at the, at the university hospital and at the University Karolinska Institute as a dean. Uh, I've been much and is involved in international affairs and uh, has been for a long time member of the Nobel Assembly at the Karolinska Institutet. Uh, we are, I would first actually to say a few things. Ursäkta. I would, I would try first to say a few things about how we have achieved a relatively high level of our healthcare system in Sweden. One reason is actually the triple helix perspective that we have uh, combined and uh, in, uh, developed a collaboration between healthcare, academia and industry. It started 50 years ago and it has been extremely important for the development. The second thing actually is the internationalization, which is uh, to, to, to connect to other countries. That's why uh, also uh, to connect Colombia is important for us, as it could be important for you. Uh, we have some uh, uh, general uh, uh, objectives in the Swedish healthcare system, which are many countries have, of course. Uh, and we, we try to offer the population a need adjusted, accessible and effective care at a high quality. And we try to uh, even out the health inequalities uh, within the country. We are a relatively large country in, in size, but you are much bigger. Uh, but we have rural areas which are difficult to reach sometimes, which you also have what I could understand. And we try also to get the people who are living in the country to take an own responsibility also for their health. <clears throat> Actually, these uh, four pictures shows it, they are a little different because the two left ones are Sweden 100 years ago, where we were one of the poorest countries in Europe, actually. Uh, we are, and a lot of our population left to the US actually uh, immigrated. But today we are one of the richest countries in the world and have a very well functioning um, uh, healthcare system. And this transformation has been very much related to what I said before, the, the collaboration between the industry, uh, academia and the, the healthcare together with the, in, uh, the internationalization process. Uh, if we look upon uh, healthcare um, parameters, indicators, we come oh, often in the top, the Swedish healthcare system. Um, and uh, this, if you relate it also to, to costs, it's still more pronounced actually. Uh, this is a comparison based on the OECD, WHO and Euro European Union data. Uh, 
which has been performed. The comparison has been done at, uh, in, in Sweden when we have uh, gathered all this data. <clears throat> this is interesting, I think, because this is a comparison between the total expend costs of for healthcare in, in the country. The blue line is Sweden, the red line is the US. And we have an, and Sweden is actually at the OECD average, which is 9.5. We have been, as you can see, the, 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 the costs for healthcare has been unchanged for 40 years. At the same time, we have developed the healthcare very much, uh, the healthcare system very much and increased quality. And we have been able to keep the costs constant. And it has been very important for us because the challenge for, uh, in healthcare is increasing all the time. <clears throat> Uh, as I said, Sweden is about one fifth of the population compared to Colombia, what I remember. Uh, we are uh, one of the largest in area, the countries with largest area in Europe, about the size of France and in Germany. But we are much smaller than, than Colombia, which is five, four to five times bigger in, in, in respect to area. And we have rural areas, uh, we have a lot of immigration, as you can see, 22% are born outside Sweden, relatively low unemployment rate, and relatively high GDP uh, per capita, that is around 55,000 uh, US dollars. And the Swedes li life expectancy is relatively long. Um, so we, we come up rather well in comparison with other countries. <clears throat> we have a, an administrative model where, where healthcare is provided uh, mostly through the regional level. I come back to that. The national level is uh, the governmental level. They support some parts of, of the healthcare system through, through the government. And on the municipality level, it's mostly elderly care, uh, which they respo take responsibility for. So it's a, a collaboration with national, regional, and local levels uh, comprising the healthcare system of Sweden. And, and you can see it also in this slide. Uh, but, so it's a relatively decentralized healthcare system because most of the responsibilities uh, are lying at the regional uh, level, the regional parliament. Uh, as you can see with a lot of county hospitals, university hospitals, healthcare centers. We have around 1,200 healthcare centers in Sweden per 10 million inhabitants. Uh, and we have both public and private, uh, but most are covered by public uh, money and public healthcare. <clears throat> you can see it here actually that, that the healthcare resources for healthcare, uh, for the healthcare system is coming, at least three around three quarters coming from taxes. And it's local taxes on a, on a regional level and one about 20% from the government and very little from the patients because they pay a, a small amount actually uh, of uh, and, and it uh, or to 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 use the healthcare system uh, and it's um, for example we have um, uh, as you can see here um, it, uh, if we go to the next slide. Um, <clears throat> Actually, that uh, that uh, to go to a, a doctor in Sweden, it's the cost is around twenty dollars. Um, to to and it's you have also a high cost protection scheme, and so after you have paid around one hundred dollars, it's free. Uh, and uh, regarding pre prescription medicines, as I know you are talking, you have a, a lot of pharma pharmaceutical discussions at the moment. There is a high cost thresh threshold system which ends at around 
200 US dollars. Above all costs above above that limit is covered by the 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 um, local the county council and, and local governments. <coughs> What is uh, important for us is the development of the primary health care, and we perhaps put too little money on, on primary health care in, in our country, and we are developing it much at the moment. I said we have 1,200 health care centers. Um, about around 8% of the expenditure is related to pharmaceuticals at the moment, um, you can, as you can see from this slide. We have, uh, 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 as I said, a, a system which is based on a social responsibility. Uh, that means that we try to uh, follow the principles of equal worth, the principles of need, uh, of healthcare to, to according to need and uh, based on solidarity. And or as I said, to, to keep down the costs and to be as cost effective as, as uh, possible. Uh, one of our as actually um, um, methods we have been, or, or tools we have been using is our national quality registers. And every citizen has, uh, or actually have their own personal ID number since a long time ago. Uh, and we can follow every uh, single person actually through the healthcare system, through many of these national quality registers, which are more than 100 uh, and covering cancer, uh, cardiac problems, hip replacements, and palliative care and stroke and so on. Uh, and they are very efficient as a tool to improve the different, uh, different areas in, in healthcare. Uh, <clears throat> we can have one example here. It's actually a Danish study where they have looked at, at uh, countries which have had since long a, a national covered um, uh, quality register system. And this is the uh, here we ha they have um, uh, compared the, or set the quality in form of a survival rate in relation to costs. And even here, the Swedish uh, it, this is all registers available within the cancer area, and we comes out well as having a high effective level in that system. And I think it's it's really a good uh, tool to improve healthcare and to follow quality in healthcare. Another thing which is, I think, uh, who promotes quality is these open comparisons which are actually um, uh, published every year in, in Sweden. Um, and it um, creates a better basis for comparing and follow up outcomes. Um, it's, um, it is a, and it creates a lot of local and national discussions on, on quality and efficiency, efficiency. Through this peer pressure, through the transparency, because it, they are fully open. Everyone can follow it. The patients can follow it. Uh, every citizen in Sweden can follow it. They can compare results between different regions, between different hospitals. Uh, not uh, not down to each. It is possible, but it's not published in relation to a, a separate doctors or or so. But but it's uh, they compare different hospitals, and and we we'll, uh, we can also learn from each other very much, which is a which is perhaps the most important part of this. Uh, <clears throat> if we look upon. Well, that's one other quality measurement, for example, uh, how is the prevalence in Europe of, uh, of uh, um, hospital acquired infections as MRSA, for example. And this is actually the percentage of resistance towards antibiotics. And uh, you can see differences in Europe with a high um, a relatively high percentage of resistance, in the, especially in the southern part of Europe, and a very low in Sweden due to, and that 
also keeps down cost as we have been able to to better control uh, the infection uh, so to say environment in in, in the country uh, as what we if we look a little forward for us it's really important to to develop um, uh, the uh, the uh, innovation area in, within healthcare this is just one example, as this is uh, Alfred Nobel, who was the founder of the Nobel Prize, uh, who invented dynamite, uh, which could be used as mostly, it was meant to be used for constructions, uh, construction purposes and not to, for, for war purposes. Um, and this has been so important for Swedish healthcare. Our, our innovation environment for example um, this is some examples uh, as uh, you perhaps know the gamma knife uh, uh, which was developed at Karinska uh, a number of years ago the implantable pacemaker which was also invented at Karinska since uh, actually 60 years ago and you have another example uh, down there the anter ulcer uh, 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 pharmac pharmaceutical compound, which also was developed in Sweden, but actually mostly in Gothenburg, in the western part of, of Sweden. We have a number of these examples which has been so important for, for the development of, 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 of our healthcare system. So we are trying to promote very much uh, uh, new innovations in healthcare at the moment. <clears throat> So, and again, this is very much related to this triple helix perspective. We try to, to build, for example, Karolinska, where I'm working at, has an innovation center embedded into the hospital uh, near the patients. And we are actually looking at development and innovation as a key success factor uh, in contenting the future challenges in healthcare. Because as you can see to the left, there are high demand on the healthcare system, but the available resources uh, in most countries are not uh, enough. So there is a gap between uh, demand for healthcare and uh, available resources. That's why we try to actually uh, create extra values through innovation in the healthcare system to 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 be more efficient uh, and that is um, uh, something which is so important at the moment as using innovation as a tool uh, to for healthcare providers to bridge this gap between uh, demands and available resources so we are very much looking today into the healthcare of the future it's uh, not so easy it's um, um, we can see um, I can perhaps go directly to this we can see in the future that um, uh, at least in the Stockholm area and in Sweden we can see that the population become more and more healthy they are more confident in their health and and want more from the healthcare system and the patients want to be met with a coherent chain of care so we are so we are communicating within the healthcare system and the patients are much more informed and they want to have an easy easy access to the healthcare system uh, and they um, and that's why we we are we, we are developing developing rather much ways of secure a secure information system and of course we must keep up quality uh, to to promote and secure patient safety and what is central for us is actually and for all of us i think is uh, to to create a coherent e-health structure uh, information technology will will actually be in the center uh, in in uh, creating the right environment for the patients. Uh, <clears throat> so at the moment, uh, this is a partly Swedish uh, slide, but 
um, it's e-health in the middle with the, with the patient in the middle. Uh, just under the patient is University Hospital, and that is the Karolinska University Hospital. Uh, and then there are psychiatry, uh, primary care, geriatrics, uh, rehabilitation, and so on uh, around the patient. But the patient will be in the center. And the access to personal patient's data and enabling the patient engagement will be so important and is important. And information with the right platforms and integrate the healthcare processes to get more value out of what we are doing. And um, this is really a great challenge for us at the moment as we are transforming the healthcare system in Sweden and in Stockholm. <clears throat> we are using actually much, much more telemedicine. Uh, the patient, you know, the number of beds in Sweden for uh, 40 years ago, it was 15 beds per thousand people. Today it's 2.5 beds. And we have the lowest number of beds in Europe and perhaps or in the, um, in the Western world. Due to that, we have been able to move the patients out of the hospitals and treat them on different levels and some of them uh, near or at their homes. And we, that's why we e-health telemedicine will be so important and is important for us now. And we try to have the open world practices through telemedicine, for example, consultations on different levels and treatment at home, as I said uh, before. So we are very much open for, this is a very short um, introduction um, and information to the Swedish healthcare system. We are working uh, with many uh, countries, hospitals over, all over the world, both the Karolinska Institute, which is the medical university, which are famed, uh, very famous in many ways, and the Karolinska University Hospital, the, which we are together uh, developing healthcare in Sweden and in collaboration with international actors. So this was just a short introduction. Um, uh, I would like, I had, would like to be in Katarzyna, but I've been in Bogota, Cali, and Medellin so far, and um, I we look forward to uh, connect and to for, for further discussions with you in the future. Thank you very much. Do Dr. Larson, thank you. Thank you very much. Y a continuación, le cedemos la palabra al doctor Héctor Eduardo Castro, investigador visitante del Departamento de Salud Global y Población de la Escuela de Salud Pública de la Universidad de Harvard.